That was President-elect Donald Trump addressing his supporters in New York City. He spoke about uniting the American people to move the nation forward. This morning, we are breaking down what this means for the U.S., and we are joined by Jennifer Hopper, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Southern Connecticut State University. Thanks for joining us this morning Thanks after a late night for many mm -hmm. of us. Let's start with the election results that we actually can see behind us right here. They really seem to come as a surprise to many because right up until the very end, a lot of the polls had Hillary Clinton leading. What was done, I guess, in those last minutes to really propel Donald Trump forward to see a result like this? Yes, and there will, there will be many questions moving forward about the nature of polling and forecasting, right. which is already a tricky business uh, in American politics, but even more so tonight about maybe some of the ways in which surveys were conducted and the realistic projections of, of what many predicted would be a victory for Clinton. Uh, you know, I think the one thing that both Trump opponents and supporters can agree upon is that he's a very different kind of candidate, an unconventional kind of candidate. And this truly did seem to shape up to be a change-oriented election, that many of the voters uh, seemed to indicate that they wanted to confront the establishment and the status quo in politics, and that was something that they felt that Trump really offered. Clinton also did not perform as well as Obama did with key demographics within the right. Democratic Party. And when you see the race so close in some of the states that we're talking about here, I'm thinking about, you know, Florida and Michigan and Wisconsin. She really needed to do better than she did there um, with, with many voters. We saw such a stark contrast between the two candidates. And by no means were there any niceties being exchanged between the two through this entire election. But then we see Donald Trump addressing his supporters at, in the early morning hours during this speech. And he's talking about uniting people and even asking for his critics for guidance. What does that say about how he is going to move things forward? Uh, this has been a very divisive, ugly, negative election, a campaign on both sides. I think either candidate uh, who won today, you were going to have half the country who was going to be very unhappy and deeply concerned, regardless of what the outcome was. And so that was really critical for the winner, in this case, Donald Trump, to come out and try to extend a hand to those on the opposite side of the aisle to try to say that you know, he was going to work for the good of the country and try to bring people back together. Whether or not that works and if that's a convincing argument sort of remains to be seen, but definitely a key part of a message after such a negative campaign. What about his tone? He was very gracious. Mm -hmm. And we've seen flashes of this throughout the campaign. Uh, in one of the debates when he was asked to say something nice about his opponent, Clinton, we saw sort of a moment of that. So occasionally that has come across in some of uh, Trump's public communications. And he uh, certainly was on message last night kind of talking about carrying out the agenda that he's campaigned on, uh, but wanting to extend an olive branch to some of his critics. Now, one major critic of his is President Obama, and the two are actually going to be meeting a little bit later on this week to talk about that transition. How is President-elect Trump going to have to work with President Obama and vice versa? Wouldn't you love to be a fly on the wall in, in that meeting? Oh, definitely. Um, it will be fascinating to see. Uh, it is part of our democratic system, the peaceful transition of right. power, no matter what you said about the other person throughout the campaign season. You know, once there is a winner, come together, accept that, uh, accept the results. That's why there was such a controversy right over the potential of a loser accepting the results in the election. Right. Uh, but I think that the way in which the Obama administration and President Obama handled the transition will be something that will be watched by the country. Uh, President Obama is such a leader still in the Democratic Party, particularly having lost uh, the presidential election. And also around the world, the other nations will be looking to see how that transition occurs. And last question for you. We know that President-elect Trump has a lot of decisions to make, and he's already been very vocal about some things that he will do when he takes over that office. A big, big thing is going to be appointing the next Supreme Court justice. How is this going to impact America's highest court? Mm -hmm. um, significantly. Uh, there are other aspects of Trump's agenda that he may face some controversy within the Republican Party about immigration and trade. But uh, it, really appointing a conservative justice to the, the Supreme Court does seem to be something that the party is in lockstep on. Uh, filling Antonin Scalia's seat will keep the balance of power roughly the same. But there are a number of members of the court that are getting up there in years, uh, Ginsburg and Kennedy. And so if Trump has the opportunity to fill some of those seats in the years ahead. That will be very, very key and consequential for the direction of the court. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and breaking it all down for us. Thanks again.
right. Coming up for you next here on Good Day Connecticut, our morning after the election coverage continues. We will have much more political news ahead this morning. History made with a new president-elect. We will check in on how the markets are looking. That's straight ahead.